Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I hope you're happy and well. If you have connections with Ireland, you're probably going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day this weekend. So, we have a special St. Patrick's Day story for you, told by the amazing Kate Corkery. It's an adventurous and fun quest story, but it is a teeny bit scary with a mean green witch. So maybe you might want to listen with a grown-up. St. Patrick was an Irish bishop. He was born in Britain during the time of Roman rule, more than 1,500 years ago. He was taken to Ireland to be sold as a slave. After he was freed, he became a priest and later he became the first bishop of Ireland. On St. Patrick's Day, people like to dress up as leprechauns and they have dancers and musicians marching in parades and sometimes they paint their faces green because green is a colour associated with Ireland. Before we begin our story, which is about a famous giant, can you think of any other tales from Ireland which we've had on our podcast? I'll give you some clues. Giants... Leprechauns, soup, palace under the water, and a beast which is part eagle and part lion. See if that helps. Have a go and see how many Irish stories you can come up with while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. Did you think of any Irish stories? Well, how about the giant story? Finn McCool and the Giant's Causeway. And there's Eggshell Soup, the story for May Day. And there's Molly and the Leprechaun, that's right. And then there's the Griffin, who is half lion and half eagle. And the one about the palace flooded under the loch or lake, which is Fia Ishka, to name but a few. I wonder how many you got. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Then here is our St. Patrick's Day story with the wonderful Kate Corkery. Hello, super great kids. Tia ye of Galair. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's Kate here, and I have an Irish story for you that I hope you can help me to tell. It's all about Finn McCool, the famous hero who worked for the High King of Ireland. He was leader of the Fianna, you know, the brave band of warriors who kept peace in the land and helped people in trouble. Together, they had many adventures all over the country, but sometimes they had time off and they went home to be with their family. One fine summer's day, Finn was walking by himself along the seashore. He sat down to admire the view. The sun was sparkling on the water and the sea was calm. Suddenly, he saw something rise up out of the water. It was a huge hat. Under the hat was a huge pair of eyes. Under the eyes was a huge big nose. Under the nose was a huge mouth. And under that, a huge chin, massive shoulders, a gigantic body. Yes, you guessed it, it was an enormous giant emerging out of the water. Splish, splash, splosh. He stepped onto the beach and squelched his way up to Finn. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splosh. Are you Finn McCool? Yes, said Finn. My master needs your help. He commands you to come now to the land of the big men. Waste no time. 
With that, the giant turned around, stepped back into the sea, splish, splash, splish, splash, splosh, and disappeared. Finn was stunned. He knew that he had been put under a geasa. Now, a geasa is a kind of an Irish spell that you cannot eat or drink or sleep until you have completed a special task. But what task? thought Finn. He didn't know. The giant didn't say. And where was the land of the big men? He had no idea. And who could help him here on this lonely beach? He was all on his own, without a horse or a hound or a weapon of any kind, without the rest of the Fianna. They were all miles away. Oh, Finn scratched his head and sucked his thumb, trying to think of a good idea. Mm. He walked along the seashore, until he saw a little man sitting on a stone. Can I help you, Finn? You look a bit troubled. Well, said Finn, I've been summoned to go to the land of the big men. I don't think someone as small as you could help me there. Oh, I may be small, said the little man, but I'm strong. Look. I have a pair of big, strong hands. Anything I grab hold of, I will never let go. Oh, then maybe you could help me, said Finn. What's your name? My name is Gripper, said the little man, and he gripped his hand and shook it. Ow! Wow. Well, thank you, Gripper. Come and meet my other friends who'd like to help you too. Out from nowhere, a small little woman appeared. She was short, but had a very, very, very long nose. What's your name? asked Finn. They call me Sniffer. I have a great sense of smell and a wonderful sense of direction. With me, you would never get lost, said Sniffer. Well, that could be useful, said Finn. Further along, they met another little person, a little girl, a quiet little girl with very big, wide ears. I hear you need help, Finn, she said. I'm a bit shy, but I can hear things happening miles away. What's your name, said Finn. Listener, she said, turning red in the face and flapping her ears even wider. Oh, listening is a good skill, said Finn. Next, he met another girl who, although she was small, had very, very long fingers and very long toes and she had very bendy arms and legs. Who are you? asked Finn. I'm Climber, said the girl. With these flexible fingers and toes and stretchy arms and legs, there's nothing I can't climb. Oh, climbing is often useful, said Finn. He walked on another bit and heard the sound. Psst! Finn, would you need my help too? A voice whispered. Finn looked about, but he couldn't see who was speaking. Who are you? They call me Taking Easy. I'm so small, I'm invisible. I can take things easily without being seen or heard. That sounds like stealing, said Finn. I don't steal, but I can take things back that have been stolen. Hmm, said Finn. Maybe that could be useful too. Next... Finn saw a very nervous little fellow with a spotty face and big, big, bulgy eyes. Can I help you, you, you too? He stuttered. Who are you? said Finn. Did they, they, they call me Spot On? What can you do that's so special? asked Finn. I, I, I have great aim and with my bow and arrow I can hit a target spot on no matter how high or how small or how far away it may be. Finn found that hard to believe but he needed all the help he could get. Finally he met the last little man on the beach. Can I help you Finn? he asked. What can you do that's so special? asked Finn. Oh I can do nothing special unless you give me three sticks. That's my name. Three sticks. If you give me three sticks, I can make anything you need out of wood. Well, said Finn, I've been ordered to go to the land of the big men, which I think is somewhere across the sea, but I have no way of getting there. I'll need a boat. Could you make me a boat? 
Three sticks picked up three sticks. He rubbed them together in the palms of his hands. He spun around three times, clapped his hands, and in an instant a beautiful boat appeared on the water. Thank you, said Finn. Karamagut. All aboard, he called, and the little helpers, one by one, climbed into the boat. Gripper grabbed onto the tiller to steer. Sniffer sat up at the bow with her nose to the wind. Listener flapped her big ears and unfurled the sails. Climber climbed up to the top of the mast. No one could see taking easy, but they presumed he was there. Spot on sat below on the deck as he was a bit nervous of the water. Three sticks waved them off and wished them bon voyage. I don't know what direction to take, said Finn. Leave that to me, said Sniffer. Just follow where I point my nose and we'll get there in no time. They headed over the waves and sailed into the west. By sunset, they arrived at the land of the big men, where everything was huge. Huge hills and valleys, huge waterfalls, huge fields filled with crops and huge orchards filled with fruit. Huge flowers growing in front of a huge golden palace with huge golden windows and huge golden doors. As the boat drew near the shore, a huge king in a golden robe ran down from the castle, waving his arms and crying, Come ashore quickly, Finn McCool. We need your help before it's too late. Come quickly, come quickly. Too late for what? asked Finn. My dear wife, the queen, has just given birth to a beautiful baby boy. We are terrified that our child will be snatched away just as our other two children were stolen from us by an evil witch who wants to take over our kingdom. The queen and her baby need to be protected at all times. Can you help us? Leave that to me and my helper, said Finn. We will guard the queen and the baby with our lives. We will not eat or drink or sleep until they are safe from harm. The king led them into the palace, up the stairs and into the royal bedchamber. The queen was resting on a big four-poster bed, surrounded by maid servants. The newborn baby lay tucked up in a golden cradle by the fireplace. <laughs> The room seemed calm and peaceful as they all tiptoed in and took their places to stay on guard all night. <laughs> After the long day travelling over the sea, everyone was tired and hungry. The room was very warm and everyone found it a little harder to stay awake. Gripper was beginning to nod off by the big fireplace when he suddenly felt something touch his shoulder. It was a big, green, bony hand with long, black, dirty fingernails stretching its way down the chimney. What do you think Gripper did? What do you think Gripper did? Yes, you're right. Gripper grabbed it by the wrist and he didn't let it go. Gripper gripped so tight and pulled so hard that he <coughs> ripped the whole slimy green arm away from its socket. Soon, the long limb laid along the bedroom floor. Everyone was startled. Everybody woke up and gathered round to gaze at the disgusting sight. The hairy green arm was crawling with maggots and worms and spiders. Ugh. While everyone's attention was on the severed arm, the second green hand shot down the chimney and in a flash whisked the baby away. In no time the cradle was empty. Finn McCool felt very ashamed that he and his helpers had failed to protect the child. Listener flapped her ears and said, I hear a witch cackle overhead. Now, oh, my child, let me take you away home to Grey Rock Island to be with your brothers. <laughs> this kingdom of the big men will never survive without an heir. 
I am the next in line to rule this kingdom. I'm in charge of all three young princes. <laughs> Soon everything will be mine. <laughs> Where is Grey Rock Island? asked Finn. <laughs> Sniffer said. It's, it's, it's a bare, barren island. It's a very cold place way up north, a long way from here. Oh, we need to sail there as fast as we can, said Finn. Let's go that away, said Sniffer, pointing her nose north. Finn and the helpers rushed from the castle to the shore. They jumped into the boat and sailed through the night. By morning, they reached the shore of Grey Rock Island. Oh, it lacked colour and life. No trees or flowers grew there. On nearing the land, all they could see was a tall black tower sticking up in the middle of the island. It had no doors, no windows. Listener flapped her ears and said, The witch lives here with her wolfhound. The only entrance is the skylight on top of the roof. But who can get up there, said Finn? Who could get up there without wings? I can said Climber. There's nothing I can't climb, no matter how steep or how slippery. Climber flexed her long fingers and toes. She stretched out her bendy arms and legs. Without delay, she climbed up like a spider to the top of the tower. She looked down through the skylight window. Below, she saw the witch, stretched out on a couch with the newborn baby asleep in her one remaining hand. On the floor, two little boys played with a silver ball, and next to them, a mother hound nursed two young puppies. <laughs> Climber climbed down and told Finn what she saw. But how are we going to rescue those little ones without waking the witch? said Finn. Psst, called a voice. I wonder if you can guess who it was. Psst, called again. I'm still here whispered, taking easy. This is where I can help. Nobody will see or hear me, but the only problem is I can't climb. Super great kids, what do you think they can do? What can they do? Taking easy can't climb. Pardon? What did you say? Ah, I heard you say. Let taking easy get on Climber's back and be carried to the top of the tower? Is that what you said? That's the best idea. How clever you are. That's what happened. So, with Climber's help, Taking Easy was carried to the top of the tower and managed to steal down inside. Very quietly, Taking Easy lifted the sleeping baby from the witch's palm. Shh! Tip Toad past the witch, past the baby up to Climber, who carried the baby down to the others waiting in line, who passed him from one to the other and one to the other and to Finn and onto the boat. In the same way, they all lent a hand to rescue the second and the third little boy. Taking Easy was so thrilled to have rescued those little boys so easily from under the witch's nose without her even noticing. He felt very pleased with himself. <laughs> Taking Easy turned to leave the tower, but took one look back at the beautiful little puppy snuggling up so cosily in the basket. <laughs> oh, he couldn't resist lifting both little puppies out of the tower and passing them along the line to Climber and all the other little men until those little puppies were also put safely on the boat. Wow. Once everyone was on board, that is, if you can remember who everybody is, that is Finn McCool, Gripper, Sniffer, Listener, Climber, Taking Easy, Spot On, Three Little Babies, Two Little Puppies, they all set sail for the land of the big men. But in no time, there was an almighty yell from the tower. The witch awoke and screamed, Where are the babies? You stupid hound, wake up, wake up. Chase after them and bring them back to me. The mother hound awoke and howled, Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, 
Then the hound bounded from the top of the tower down onto the rocky shore, gnashing, gnashing, her sharp teeth, the powerful hound plunged into the water and splish, splash, splish, splash, swam after the boat. Overhead, thunder and lightning crashed in the sky. A storm blew up over the sea. The boat was tossed about on huge waves. The baby started to cry. <laughs> The puppies yelled and whimpered. Everybody on board was frightened and Spot On felt a little bit sick. As the hound was nearing the boat and opening its enormous mouth showing its big sharp teeth, Finn sucked his thumb and wondered what to do for the best. What do you think, Super Great Kiss? What should Finn do now? What should he do now? Yes, I agree. The best thing to do was return those puppies to their mother. Finn lowered the basket into the water. The mother hound quickly came to the rescue and swam back to the shore with her puppies, for that is what she wanted. She lost all interest in the boat as she licked and nuzzled her little ones on the shore. <laughs> There was another shrill scream from the tower. Bring back that boat! Bring back those babies! The hound did not obey. The witch was furious and stood up on top of the tower with her one green arm outstretched. She spread her cape out against the stormy sky and took off like a dart through the air. All below in the boat were terrified as the witch flew as quickly as she could towards them. Listener flapped her ears and said, I've heard that witch is so evil she feels no pain. There's only one spot on her whole body where she can feel anything at all. And that's a small mole in the palm of her one remaining hand. But it's very hard to see. She's so high up in the sky. She's moving so fast. Spot on. F -f Found the courage to speak. Uh, I think I, I can help. He reached unsteadily for his bow and arrow. Even though the boat was going up and down on the waves, the wind was blowing hard, the thunder and lightning were flashing in the heavens, little Spot on stayed as calm as he could to do what he did best. He took a careful aim and fired his bow and arrow Ching! straight up through the sky. By now the witch was hovering overhead, about to swoop down on the boat, and the arrow landed ping, right in the middle of the mole of her outstretched hand. The witch screamed in agony, she dropped from the sky, splashed into the cold water. Sssss. With a hiss and a splash and a gurgle, she vanished beneath the waves and was never seen again. I don't know if witches can swim, can they? Finn and his little helpers returned the three little princes to their delighted parents. The king and queen of the land of the big men couldn't thank Finn enough. He said he couldn't have done anything without his little helpers, the little friends who each did one thing so well, and together they had completed the task. They were invited to a big feast. It lasted nine days and nights. Finn and the little helpers then said goodbye to their friends in the land of the big men and they jumped in the boat and headed back to Ireland. When they got back, Finn bid farewell to his little helpers and never saw them after that. He went on to have many adventures with the mighty warrior of the Fianna, but he never forgot those little friends who helped him so much in his time of need. I hope we all find friends who can help us in our time of need. Snip, snap, snout. The story is out.
Thank you very much, Kate, for sharing that splendid story on this St. Patrick's Day weekend. So, here's a question Kate would like to know. If you have a special skill, something you're good at, maybe hopping on one leg or whistling your favourite tune, or maybe playing keepy-uppy with a ball, or telling riddles or jokes. Once you've thought of something you're good at, maybe then you could think of a special name you'd give yourself if you were going to be a helper in a story. Happy Hopper? Or Super Swimmer? Or Wacky Whistler? Or whatever you like. You could try asking your grown-ups if they've got a wacky thing they're good at and what they'd call themselves in a story like this. Now. If you like that story, maybe you could draw us a picture of your favourite moment. The giant's head rising out of the sea, dripping with seaweed. Or the boat full of little helpers with Sniffer sitting on the bow and pointing her very long nose forwards into the breeze. Now, I have a quick announcement to make. We like nothing more than hearing from storytellers around the world. And we're very pleased to be lucky enough to have heard tales recently from Wangari in Kenya, Masako in Japan, Liz in Northern Ireland, Simone from Germany, Rebecca from Belgium and Maya from Tanzania. We'd really like to hear from an Indigenous storyteller from Australia and a Native American from North America. So, if anyone listening is a storyteller from either of those cultures, we'd love to hear from you. Now, lots of you have been joining our club and hopping into our owlet's nest. So, it's time to dip into our bag of happies and say thank you and hello to some new owlets and some super fans. Hello and welcome to Mavis, who is five, and Lucinda, who is eight, from Baltimore in Maryland. Mavis's favourite stories are Anansi and the Magic Pot, The Luck Child and Baba Yaga and her little brother. Lucinda's favourite stories are Kia and the Purple Fish, The Luck Child and Anansi and the Party. Over to Tennessee now to say hello to seven-year-old Lindy, who was very pleased to be given a membership to the Owlets Club for Christmas from her kind grandparents. She's been waiting patiently for her shout-out, and while she found it hard to choose her favourite story, amongst her favourites are Eggshell Soup and Anansi and the Magic Pot. Over to Denver in Colorado next to swoop down and say hello to fans Hazel, who is seven, and Theodore and Henry, who are five-year-old twins. Their favourite stories are the scary stories, especially Baba Yaga and the ghost of the bloody finger. And a big happy hoot now as we fly to Brisbane in Australia to say hello to Maya, who is five and a half. Maya's favourite story is Nora and the Aki Fruit. She's been listening to Super Great Kids stories for two years and can sing lots of the songs. Well done, Maya. She listens with her little brother Nico, who is two. To you too, Nico. <laughs> Over to Burke now in Virginia in the US. And hello to Mum Anahita and sisters Larmina, who is four, and Syrah, who is seven. They both love telling stories and enjoying both super great and super great scary stories. A happy hoot now to Reese from Seattle in Washington in the US. Reese is seven and loves foxes. Her favourite story is The Fox and the Crow. She sent us a beautiful drawing of the orange fox and the cheeky black crow perched on its nest from the Greek story The Fox and the Crow. North now from Washington State to British Columbia in Canada to say hello to four-year-old Milan. Milan's favourite story is the cracked pot and he loves singing along with storyteller Seth 
row, row the boat to Hockeyan Bay. Well done, me lun, for learning a song. Maybe you could try learning a story next. Heading south to Riverside in California next, and hello to Abel, who is eight, and Ivan, who is six. They've been listening to the stories since last August. Abel's favourite stories are the Baba Yaga ones, and Ivan says he likes them all. Ah, <laughs> that's good to hear, Ivan. Over to Manhattan in New York City next to say hello to Ellie, who is five. Her favourite story is Cat of Rushes. A beautifully told story, Ellie. I agree. And across to Pine Lake in Georgia now to say hello to seven-year-old Zephyr Dove, who's been listening to super great kid stories since she was three. I think that makes you a super fan. Her favourite story is The Hairy Toe, because in the beginning, it's funny. In the middle, it's disgusting. And at the end, it's actually pretty scary. Very well said. I wonder if you can tell that story, Zephyr Dove. Over to Bastrop in Texas now to say hello and welcome to new members Layla, who is five, and Omaya, who is two. They listen with their baby brother, Asher, and their favourite stories are the Baba Yaga ones. And hello to superfan Etty, who has just turned eight. Etty lives in the UK and listens to all our stories and often makes thoughtful comments on them in the Patreon channel. Etty has two dogs, Coco and Daphne, and has just turned eight. Hope you had a happy day, Etty. Two Pick of the Week pictures today. One comes from seven-year-old Seb from Harpenden in the UK, who listens to stories with his identical twin brother Rafe and his sister Erin. Seb drew a very imaginative picture of the Tramp and the Boots story told by Amy Douglas. He drew the tramp's hairy leg against the backdrop of a magical night. You can see the thorns sticking out of the tramp's feet and the tiny primrose yellow boots which the fairies provide for him. And Seb has included himself standing on the moon and looking down at the whole picture. Thanks, Seb. That's very imaginative. And another imaginative drawing came this week from Ananya, who is eight and a half. Ananya has included characters from several stories, like Anansi the Spider, and the Crow from Fox and the Crow, and the Sad Giant, and then cleverly put them all into one drawing, with all the characters listening to a beautifully drawn story owl, who is just beginning to tell a story. Really clever, Ananya. Thanks for sharing that. If you'd like to see all the super great pictures sent in this week, go to facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. More Owl at Welcomes next week. Thank you for being patient. And thanks to all of you who are subscribing to our podcast. If you'd like to support our podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, you'll hear our stories advert free. And you'll get over 35 bonus stories and at least 20 super great scary stories. For more information, go to our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. Happy St. Patrick's Day if you're celebrating that. And if you're observing Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. Back to Trickster Stories next week and some exciting news to share with all super great kids story fans. Hurrah! This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in fabulous Fitzrovia in London.